maybe people in the church of Jesus Christ don't step out to do anything because they don't want to deal with any kind of trouble. But what does this passage tell us up above here? It says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations worketh patience. It starts with the tribulation, and then we get patience, and then it goes on and ends with the Holy Ghost being shed abroad in your heart. Try giving that some, selling that on TV, all right? Come for your healing, give it 20 bucks. How about saying, come, get your tribulation, send $40, we got it for you. <laughs> not going to hear that anywhere. Praise the Lord this morning. One of the songs this morning, it says, Do we have trials and temptations? Are there troubles anywhere? Anybody have trials and temptations? Anybody have troubles? The title this morning is Satisfied in the Lord's Grace. All right. Satisfied in the Lord's Grace. Romans chapter 9, 1 through 24. Everybody's favorite passage. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises." whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. <clears throat> and not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. Verse 22, What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he, make, that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he hath called, not only of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. You can chew on those scriptures this afternoon, 1 through 24. 
again and again, and you'll get a lot of stuff out of that, and I hope you do. This message of this morning is not on the concepts of Arminianism and Calvinism. It is simply on the sound biblical doctrine that we owe 100% of our salvation to the Lord. And that should give us perpetual satisfaction in him as we incur unpleasantries in this world. Whether it comes from our, from our own actions, the devil, others, or simply because this world is in a fallen state because of sin. We will talk about the troubles and the tribulations shortly, but we, we must first get a grip on the fact that the Lord has elected us and he will take care of his children. Many in this church are going through severe trials and tribulations. And many times, that can take your focus off the Lord onto your unpleasant situations. Keep your mind on the Lord, for he will keep thee. The simple fact is that he saved you while you were against him. Will he now be against you while his spirit lives within you? I say assuredly not. Please turn to Romans 5.10. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Praise the Lord. Romans 8.29-39. through 39. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of the God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. John 6.44 No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me, draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. I think a lot of times when we talk about election, or God's election for us, people stumble at the fact that it takes away free will. When it doesn't do that at all. We just have to remember that free will is upon everybody in the world. The difference between, there's a difference between free will and ability. We, if we take a natural man, um, we take Jack as a free will to do what he wants in this world. Okay? He is free to do what he wants. Okay? But if Jack wants to go out here and fly like a bird, can he do that? He cannot. Why? He doesn't have the ability. So, in the natural, he doesn't have the ability, and in the spiritual, we don't have the ability or desire. Doesn't matter, top to bottom, rich or poor, uh, powerful or weak, 
um, men will only have that desire when they're born again. Okay? We have examples of Pharaoh. He was a powerful man. Seen miracles from God. Miracles right out of heaven. And still wanted to kill the Lord's people. Revelation. Here's a good instance of, of uh, the end times when people will see miracles. Chapter 16, verses 8 through 11. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to pray, to, to give unto him, unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blaspheme the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain and blaspheme the God of heaven because of their, their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. If you don't have an ability for something, a desire, you will not do it. Um, that's just the way it is, and we all know that. And, you know, there's a guy in school one time, he told me, he goes, boy, Kyle, this girl, I like her. He goes, she's... He, I knew who it was, and he goes, isn't she the most beautiful girl you've ever seen in your life? And I said, no. <laughs> and he's like, you know, he had, that, uh, he had that desire, but I didn't have that desire. The same with human beings as far as our election. We have a desire for the Lord. We come to the Lord. We really do come to the Lord. We really do ask for forgiveness. We really do have repentance. We do all those things. There is an action but we have that action because he has given us the ability. Okay? So man has free, uh, a free will, and then we have ability at the new birth. We should be looking like Jesus after the new birth and walking like him. But our free will is still there. But we have an ability now with that free will to obey or disobey. Okay? We have a desire to do what Christ wants, and we have an ability to do what Christ wants. But we're not puppets. We can also do our own thing. Okay? Now, but praise the Lord, we have the ability, right? James chapter 1, 12 through 18. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren, every good gift... And every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Verse 18, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So of his will, with the word, he begets us. And we won't go into John. We've been to John chapter 3 before. He talks about being born again and so forth. Have you ever considered this, that in John chapter 3, he doesn't talk about believing until the second half of the passage in John chapter 3? What does he talk about first? He talks about being born again. Then he talks about believing. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Amen. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Now we have to remember the Lord is sovereign over everything. And that includes the troubles that befall you. He isn't the author of sin, but he has the power to stop it or let it happen. 
Remember, you can't have a God that's just sovereign over your election and not over everything else. He is sovereign over everything. And if that is the case, and I believe it is, then shouldn't we have a full, unwavering confidence that he will remedy our problem or carry us through it? That doesn't alleviate the fact that we need to go to him in prayer and supplication. Supplication means to ask earnestly and humbly. How many people here pray consistently? How many people were here at the prayer meeting this morning? Take a little dig at you this morning, right? Okay. You know, you might take a dig at me and say, well, it's his will. It was his will. I wasn't here. Well, <laughs> it was his will. But sometimes he lets us be disobedient, right? Okay. We, we still have free will, but we have the ability to be obedient or disobedient. James chapter 4, 1 through 3. James chapter 4, 1 through 3. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and, up, and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet ye have not, because you ask not. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lusts. The grace the Lord has given you didn't start with you. And it's not dependent upon you being in severe tribulation or not in tribulation. It doesn't depend upon your feelings or by how your day went. So keep your confidence in the Lord and be in peace and satisfied in Him. For you can be sure that we will have troubles as Christians. Be sure of it. Job, chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. Chapter 5, 6 and 7. Although affliction cometh not forth of the dust, neither doth trouble spring out of the ground, yet man is born unto trouble, as the sparks fly upward. Job is saying in verse 6 that affliction cometh not forth of the dust. That word affliction can be translated as evil or iniquity. He is saying that iniquity just doesn't pop out of thin air. But there is trouble because he says man is born unto it. There is such a thing as cause and effect. Okay? Where does iniquity or sin come from? God is not the author of iniquity or sin. He allows it. But it came upon man's fallenness. And we're all involved with iniquity and sin. My point is, is that we are going to have troubles in this life. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 25 through 33. Matthew 16, 25 through 33. Is it John? Okay. John 16, 25 through 33. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come un into the world again. I leave the world, and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speaketh no proverb. Now we are sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee, but by this we believe that thou camest forth from God. There they believe, and they're saying they believe now, okay? Verse 31, Jesus answered them, Do you believe now? Or do you now believe? Verse 32, Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. 
in the world, you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know, in the business world, in the welding world, in the construction world, uh, Curtis knows when you see the word shall in your, in your specification, that means it's going to take place. Okay? It's not maybe. It's shall. Jesus says, these things in the world you shall have tribulation. And he's trying to tell them that because like me and Lance, we were discussing this morning, you know, we, we come here and we're, we're commanded to come here. Praise the Lord. We want to come here. We have a desire to come here. Praise the Lord and praise his name. But we get out and about in the business world, in the market and so forth, and we're in a way, in a sense, we're scattered. Okay? And then tribulation can come, and then all of a sudden you're at work and you've got 40 people around you, and they're saying, you know, an example, these LGBTQ people, they're right. They should, that's, that's, a, that's a true thing and that's a righteous thing. And then you're over there by yourself and you're like, oh boy, you know, you know, you're like R.C. Sproul in class when his teacher says, you believe that Jesus is the only way? And Sproul's like, oh my gosh, you know, what am I going to say now? All these students are around, you know, and he has to stand up and he, he goes, uh, yes, you know. So we, we have to stand in the face of that, but we're going to have tribulation. Jesus says it, and he's warning us here. He says to them, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and ye shall leave me alone. In this world, you shall have tribulation. Jesus says they'll have tribulation, and here's why. Acts chapter 14, partially why. Acts chapter 14, 21 and 22. Acts 14, 21 and 22. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom of God. Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience and experience hope, and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Maybe, maybe some people in the invisible church, not talking about in here, I'm just saying in the Lord's church everywhere, maybe people in the church of Jesus Christ don't step out to do anything because they don't want to deal with any kind of trouble. But what does this passage tell us above here? It says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations worketh patience. It starts with the tribulation, and then we get patience, and then it goes on and ends with the Holy Ghost being shed abroad in your heart. Try giving that some, selling that on TV, all right? Come for your healing, give it 20 bucks. How about saying, come, get your tribulation, send $40, we got it for you. <laughs> not going to hear that anywhere. But we're temporarily here, right? Temporarily. How many people in this place today want the Lord to sit amongst them in heaven and be fed by him? I would say mostly everybody. Turn to Revelation chapter 7, 13 through 17. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. 
Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall sunlight on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and he shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Do you see a pattern here? No commitment with tribulation, then no gain. You step out in faith and walk close to the Lord, and you won't have to look for tribulation. It will find you. I want to read two stories about a man who was perplexed in one instance and wavering in the next instance. He was filled with the Holy Ghost from his mother's womb. We pick up this story as John the Baptist is baptizing people in the Jordan in Matthew 3, 11 through 17. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus was then baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You know, John didn't understand what was going on. He was perplexed. Sometimes we are we're called to do something. We don't know what it's all about, but we just must obey the Lord. In this case, you know, Jesus wasn't repenting of any sin, but there was an ordinance given that people come and be baptized and repent. And if Jesus hadn't followed that ordinance, he would have been disobedient, and he would have been found lacking and all the precepts and the will of God and the law of God, okay? So John didn't understand that, but Jesus understood it and said, just suffer it now, okay? So if there's things we don't understand um, that we need to just let the Lord work in our lives and just depend upon him. Like John did, praise the Lord, he did. Sometimes we are in situations that are so perplexing to us that we can't wrap our head around them, but we just need to trust the Lord's word and listen to him. In fact, we need to cling to him. This wasn't, this wasn't John's only situation. The next one wasn't perplexing at all. It was a life and death matter. Matthew chapter 11, 1 through 6. Got a couple passages here. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end to commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. This is why John was in prison, Matthew 14, 1 through 12. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife. For John said unto him, It is not lawful for thee to have her. And, he, and when he would have put him to death, he feared the multitude because they counted him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and it pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she, being instruct, before instructed of her mother, said, Give me here John Baptist's head in a charger. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, 
for the oath's sake, and them which sat with him at meat, he commanded it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a charger, and given to the damsel, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body, and buried it, and went and told Jesus. So what happened here? John did what we're supposed to do, right? We preached the gospel, preached the word of God. And he was put into tribulation or into the prison. As soon as he's in prison, he starts asking, go ask Jesus if he's the one. I'm taking a little license here. I don't know what he was thinking. Maybe he was like, uh, I don't know if I should be here in prison. Go ask Jesus if he's the one or should we look for somebody else? Um, did Jesus run and get him out? No. He was beheaded. In Matthew eleven six, 6, with the verse we just read, it says, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. I want to say in closing, it's not easy, an easy task to not be offended, especially when your head is on the chopping block. We live in an era that we don't have a great need for many things. But you go back 150 years ago, and it was just tribulation probably to get something to eat for the day. You might not have even any food, and maybe nothing was running around. You didn't have no bullets to even kill anything. But even back then and now, there is something we can put our hope in if we're in tribulation, even if our head is on the chopping block. Because we have salvation in the Lord. The title of this message today is Satisfied in the Lord's Grace. We talked about election first because it's him that saved us and it's him that will keep us. Now, if we're going to be in tribulation, which this book says we will, then we can have rest and peace in that, that he will take care of us. Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 through 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive tree shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. We're going to be in tribulation, folks, and if, if there's Christians out there, I don't know if there's any in here, but if people have made a decision that they're not going to, to do something, they're born again and they're going to hold back, they don't want to be in any kind of problems, any kind of turmoil, they got another thing coming because the Lord will do what he wants to do. Here's my closing verse, John chapter 2. 21, 17 through 19. Okay, let's set the scene. Peter, okay, Jesus has died. The Lord has risen. What's Peter do? He says, let's go fishing. Okay, he's not even thinking about preaching. He says, let's go fishing. The Lord comes and he says, he's asking Peter if he loves him. And we pick it up here the third time, he says in 17. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, Thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither, whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. And then even after that, 
Peter's talking about John. He's going, well, what about John? <laughs> I got to follow you. What, what's John doing? John, the Lord says, well, you know what, Peter, if he just tarries here, that's none of your business, but you follow me. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we just thank you this morning, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your abundance, for keeping us, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We glory, your Bible says, the glory and tribulations, Lord, and we do this morning. And our glory and mostly is in that you will keep us, Lord. You will look after us. You have birthed us. And you're faithful and true, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that you just minister to every person here that, Lord, you're doing a great work, Lord, that you want to to save people and you want to use us to to do your work, Lord. Would you minister to us this morning, Lord? Help us, Lord. If there's somebody that doesn't want to step out and do something, Lord, just prod them, Lord. Anoint them to do your will, Lord. There may be tribulation involved, Lord, but just be with them and keep them, Lord. And those that are in tribulation right now, Lord, just give them a peace, Lord, that passeth all understanding, Lord. For you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. And you're not a man that you should lie, Lord. We just thank you for all this. We ask that you protect us, Lord. Be with us the rest of the day, Lord. Holy Spirit, just fill us, Lord, the rest of the week. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen.